everyone, it's Charlene with Tranquil Tuesdays. Um, as you can see, I did not cut my bangs. I just went the path of least resistance and I'm just letting them grow up. Um, <laughs> so I know last week I said I was gonna make a video about cold brew tea and I am, but first I really wanted to make a, a video about the Boston Tea Party because I've been thinking a lot about the Boston Tea Party today. So in honor of the Boston Tea Party, I am going to make a black tea, a Chimin black tea, um, which will make more sense as this video goes along. So um, I grew up going to public schools in California from, from kindergarten to 12th grade. And I, like most Americans, learned about the Boston Tea Party of December 16th, 1773, as a seminal moment in the American independence movement when uh, a group of people went to the British East India Company ships docked in Boston Harbor and raided the ships, looted the items, and destroyed the property, throwing 45 tons of tea overboard to pr protest British colonial rule. Um, what most people don't realize is that even though this tea was sitting on a British East India company ship, all that tea was from China. Um, at that time in 1773, China dominated global tea trade. Tea was not cultivated or grown in India or Sri Lanka yet. That would happen 57 plus years later in the 1830s. Um, and all the tea at that time was loose leaf tea. Uh, tea bags were not invented yet. Those, those are invented 150 years later. So most of the tea on board those ships was a type of Chinese black tea called bohi. And we're going to talk about that more in a second, but first I'm going to start making my tea. Um, so, it's like I do for everything. I heat up everything first. Oh, that's maybe too much, but it's okay. Um, just heating all my implements to, you know, get everything ready, warm it up. Like I say, it's heating your pan before you start cooking. Okay. Um, so this Chimin black tea here is a tea that is from Anhui province. Uh, you can learn more about this tea in the video I did a couple weeks ago about whether or not to put milk in your tea or not. Just put some leaves in here. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. And like most black teas, I want really hot water. This water is uh, under boiling. It's probably like around 200 degrees. It was straight up boiling a little while ago. Uh, I'm gonna just do a quick rinse. And this is, like I said, what I like to do to kind of prep your tea to open up and release its flavors. It's like stretching before running. So this is, see, this is like a really light color, so I just, you saw, I just went in and out. Um, and I want to say, so this tea is from Anhui province in China, but in the Boston Tea Party, all the tea that was on those ships is from Fujian province. And that's important to know because the word bohi is an anglicized version of the local Fujianese Minan dialect for Wuyi Mountains. So this tea producing, a very famous tea terroir known in the Wuyi Mountains, it's a very famous tea mountain, that somehow morphed itself into Bohi. So Wuyi became Bohi. So that's what um, the term Bohi tea means. It usually means, a, it historically meant a black tea from the Wuyi Mountain region. Um, so, and because bohi was so popular, um, the word bohi kind of became slang just for tea, kind of like Kleenex becomes what we call tissue and Xerox is, you know, you get what I mean. Okay, uh, I'm going to make the first brew now. So I'm going to leave this for about uh, a minute. I'm going to just put this back in here to keep this warm. So according to one historical source, the shipment of tea that was sitting in Boston Harbor that um, the Boston Tea Party participants threw aboard 
overboard, was a shipment of 240 cases of bohi, 60 cases of singlu, 15 cases of kongu, 15 cases of hyson, and 10 cases of sochong. Those all sound very unfamiliar, <laughs> I know. Those are not tea names we see on grocery stores or tea websites nowadays, because those are all mostly outdated colonial tea trading names that we no longer use. Um, but it is important to know that the value of the chess of that tea would be nearly $2 million in today's money. Um, so we talked a little bit about what bohi is. Um, I'm gonna tell you just quickly some of what the other words you know, the other teas that I mentioned were. Um, a, a kongu is supposed to be like a premium sort of bohi. I'm gonna, I think it's time. And then hisen and singlu were both green teas. So actually, um, there was a good amount of green tea on those ships and being exported to America at that time and for Americans to drink. Um, Hyson is, they got its name because, you know, when during the green tea harvest, the most prized green tea is, or not, well, some of the most prized tea green tea because it's earlier in the harvest is called Yu Qian, which is um, tea before the rains. And somehow, <laughs> Yu Qian sounded like Hyson to the traders. And Hyson was the last name of the East India Company director, Philip Hyson, so that became the name they used for this type of green tea. And apparently, Hyson is the type of tea that the fancy gentleman, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson like to drink. Okay, so I'm gonna try this chi mid left tea. Ooh, very good. I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit because it's quite hot, but it's just such a nice flavor. It's just that multi, full, piney, smoky, roasted, nutty, and honeyish flavor. Um, so as the revolutionary movement was coalescing around this idea of protesting British rule and British taxes, there was also a movement among Americans to not drink tea as part of the way that they could participate in this protest. and. So at that time, it became quite trendy to drink herbs instead. And as you all know, herbs are not tea. <laughs> that was a video we did a few weeks ago, if you need to check that video out. Um, there's actually this poem from 1773 by a woman named Susanna Clark that talks about drinking herbs instead of tea. And I'm going to post that in the link below or in the um, section below. And I hope the next time you enjoy some Chinese black tea, it will make you think of the Boston Tea Party. And right, I just was thinking a lot about the Boston Tea Party today because the Boston Tea Party was a riot and there was looting. And we love to teach and celebrate this riot as foundational to American history and the American spirit and national character. Um, so much so that there is a fascinating diary entry that John Adams has the day after the Boston Tea Party, December 17th, 1773. Um, as you might know, John Adams was a character that King George sings about and makes fun of in the musical Hamilton. He is also the second president of America. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to read you his diary entry the day after the um, Boston Tea Party. He said, last night, three cargoes of bohi tea were emptied into the sea. This is the most magnificent movement of all. There is a dignity, a majesty, a sublimity in this last, last effort of the patriots that I greatly admire. I hope you enjoyed learning about Chinese tea in Boston Tea Party. And next week, I will definitely be making and showing you a video about cold brew tea. Thanks. Happy Tranquil Tuesdays.